the level of production was nowhere near what we need to have a strong currency. And that's the main reason. And uh, I, when I came in, up to the time I left, we were able to manage it. And uh, I left it after 18 years to 1 to 18. One of the first casualties of SAP was the Naira, which crashed and continued to crash until it almost became unattractive to transact business with the Nigerian currency. The economy, rather than gain some strength, as expected under SAP, dipped to a lower ebb. What really went wrong in those years of the Structural Adjustment Program implementation? The Guardian editorial records the first draft of history. Quote, The Structural Adjustment Program was not thoroughly and consistently implemented by the administration. It has been a jerky performance. It was as though the initiators of SAP did not believe in it themselves. End of quote. The Structural Adjustment Program, which economic apologists under IBB said was a necessary dose, became the singular weapon which killed the Nigerian currency. To date, the Naira is still battling to recover fully. Under that same program, General Babangeda introduced a belt tightening policy to revive the economy. While living standards for the vast majority of Nigerians fell below the subsistence level, a privileged few lived in affluence. Corruption index soared, and the Nigerian economy was at its worst ruination. General Babangida delivered an epochal speech at the Nigerian Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies on the direction of his vision, and I quote, I would like to see us build a society which guarantees the individual freedom of thoughts, speech and action, and protects society and action, and protects society as a whole from the threat to the security of persons, family and prosperity." End of quote. What followed in the eight years of Babangida administration ran diametrically opposed to his declaration. The eight years proved to be perhaps the worst catalogue of human rights abuse, muscling of thoughts and opinions, and the worst evidence of family and personal dehumanization and deprivation. In a matter concerning life and death, you are given 24 hours to appeal? No, no, I don't, th I don't think that was fair. And besides, if you go through the sittings, as I did, even the president of the court was telling some of us the accused, keep down your hand. You are pointing an accusing finger at somebody. Don't you know that if you point one, uh, one finger at somebody else, the other four uh, pointing at you, he was in fact intimidating many of us. Yes, I'm sorry to say it, but he is late now, but that is what he said. And I wrote it in my book, you know, that that was very unfair of us and that wasn't supposed to have been done. Unresolved murders, state-sponsored conflicts, closure of media houses, detentions, extrajudicial killings, terror and intimidation are fine characteristics of military dictatorships. It is a shared malady among all dictators. The nation stood in awe as such reports filtered across the land during the Babangida era. Quote, 19th October 1987, Delegiwa editor-in-chief of Newswatch was killed by a letter bomb. That was the first and only time ever in Nigeria's history. Delegiwa's death by a letter bomb in his study is a fact of history. What has remained a mystery are the people behind the act of terror. End of quote. Sectarian conflicts in Katsina, Bochi, Kano and Kaduna, year 1991. They will go out. Some they cut their half up. What are we going to do? And we run for police station. We run for police station. We tell them police station. They call us as a very key. They call us. They call the key police. They call two 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 police. Intolerance to public opinion was manifested 
the closure of media houses, including The Guardian, Punch, Concord, Sketch, and Ogun Radio. However, one of IBB's successes that he would be remembered for is his policy to liberalize broadcasting by decree number 30 of 1992, which was eventually implemented in 1994. That act gave birth to Nigeria's private radio and television ownership. It is a fact of history that General Babangida released and pardoned citizens either held in detention or jailed by his military predecessor. It is also true that by the time he stepped aside in 1993, our prisons were more populated than he met them in 1985. For three of us who were jailed, in fact, we were convicted, we were sentenced to death, you know, but our death sentences were committed to life sentences, you know, and uh, later on, after languishing in jail for about seven and a half years, for me, I was um, released, you know, by the general himself, that's General Babangida, you know, but my other two colleagues still remain for about three more years. And we have been writing for our case to be revisited up to today. I still have letters written, one written to Puta Panel and uh, about three or four written to the presidency. And I'm quite sure that um, our present president will surely look into that matter. General Babangida's body language perhaps betrays his next step of action at every point. Two coups staged against General Babangida as military president and the measures effected by him for his own safety and in his own selfish interest portray a character trait that is distinctive and vintage Babangida. 1990 Gideon Oka led an unsuccessful coup to upstage General Babangida. General Babangida responded by speeding up the relocation of the seat of power from Lagos to Abuja. General Babangida relocated to the fortress his government built in Abuja, the new federal capital. The planners of the failed coup had, among other reasons, indicated that they moved against their commander-in-chief to stop his plan to perpetuate himself in office. Less than two months after Babangida assumed power, a plan to upstage his government was said to have been uncovered. The plot was said to have been masterminded by Maman Vatsa. Vatsa was a close friend of General Babangida. They were very, very close from my own knowledge that a closer to a point that I did not know that my husband and Babangita are not from the same parents. Honestly speaking, when I got married, I did not know the difference. And my husband has never said they are not from, because he called him Dangwa, Abokina, Dangwa, if he come, even if Babangita at that point, he, you know, he used to drink well, well. If he comes here by 2 o'clock midnight, my husband, and he said he's hungry, my husband will say I should go to kitchen and cook for him. If he get his dress messed up outside and so forth, because they wore the same size, he will come to my house and change and drop the dirty and throw one in my parlor and wear my husband on and go. So, I didn't see any different. And I have never been 